Hi, this is Gracie from P3, and in this video, I'm going to uh, walk you through creating um, the first part of your autonomous program to detect either the sleeve or the signals and park in the correct zone. So, to start, we're going to go off of this basic concept, TensorFlow Object Detection, uh, and we'll give it a name. And the sample code already walks you through uploading your model and configuring the camera and all that, so we're going to skip down to the um, actual meat of the code. So what we need to do here, this code will have the robot detect the objects and uh, basically display the info on your driver station or phone about uh, the object. And this is set as a teleop right now, so we're going to have to change this to an autonomous. And that also means that instead of having this while loop, we're going to need a for loop. And a for loop runs for a set amount of times. So in this, the default here is it runs 10 times. And we, excuse me, we are uh, going to move that out of the way. We're going to want this to go for probably somewhere between 100 and 1,000 times. I'll put in 500 for now. And the reason for this for loop is I found that if you just have the camera detection algorithm go through like once, it doesn't really give it enough time to actually detect the cone or the sleeve. Um, so having this for loop basically just gives the robot enough time to actually detect the uh, items that it's trying to detect. And the number it kind of depends for each robot, so you can play with it um, and figure out like uh, the smallest amount of time basically needed to detect it so that you have as much time for the actual autonomous portion of your code as possible. Uh, and if you you might be able to think of a different way to do this without having a for loop, but um, this works for my team. So now we have this code, and this code is going to continuously update what it sees. This recognitions is going to be uh, any objects that the robot can see. And then in this if block, we see that if the length of recognitions, and recognitions is a list of objects, so if the length of that is zero, then that means the robot did not detect any objects, and all that happens is that the uh, driver station is going to print out that there's no objects detected. And then this else block runs when there are objects detected, and that um, just displays info for each of those objects. So we're going to take advantage of this existing code here and just add something under uh, for under this for each item detected list, and that will uh, run every time that we detect a cone. So what we need to do there is basically tell the robot which zone it needs to go to based off of what image it sees. So under the logic tab, we're going to grab an if do else it an if do else if do else block and drag it under here and then we're going to go under utility sorry first we're going to go into a logic and grab one of these equal blocks and then we go under utilities scroll down to tensorflow object recognition and we're going to grab this one of recognition dot label and drag it right there and as we can see, this for loop is going to be running for each recognition. So we're going to want to uh, use recognition as our label here. And this is going to basically return the label that is detected by the robot. And if you did a custom model, the labels are whatever you um, labeled when you blocked off your images. So maybe you did blue, yellow, and red, or one, two, three. Whatever that is, that's your label. And if you guess using the um, signal zones that are like default, then that will be one bolt, two bolt, and three panel. So I'll go, uh, I'll put those for now. So one bolt. And you can copy and paste that and drag it under the else if. And we'll change that to two bulb. And it's very important that these are exactly as it appears in the label. If there's if there's a space, if there's a lowercase letter that can uh, mess it up, and then your program won't actually detect it. 
Uh, and what this is doing is it's telling the robot um, we're going to be translating the label into a zone number that the robot that can then use to park. So we're going to have to create a variable, and I'll call it zone to keep it simple. And we're going to drag this zone under there, grab a math block to be a number, and set it to 1, 2, and 3. And that tells the robot to translate the labels into actual sound markings. So just to go over this one more time, this block is saying if the label of the recognition detected, the object detection, is equal to one bolt, then the robot knows that the zone is one. If it's two bulb, then the robot knows that's going to be uh, the second zone. And this else, uh, we don't need one of, we don't need an else if because. By process of elimination, we know that if it's not one bolt or two bulb, it must be three panel, and that zone will be three. And the final thing we need to do with the zone before uh, moving past the object detection part of the program is we need to give zone a default value. Since, as you can see, we only ever set currently we only ever set zone to be equal to a number after uh, going through the if and else blocks of detecting an item. So we need the zone to still be equal to a number even if the robot never detects an item because if we call on zone later in the program and zone was never uh, initialized then that's going to put an error in the program and we don't want that. So at the start of the program during the initialization right before this wait for start ooh, my bad we're going to set zone to be equal to 1, 2, or 3. You can pick whatever. I'll put 3 for now. Um, and this basically means that if the robot never detects anything, then it'll uh, default to the third zone. So now that we have our zone set up to be 1, 2, and 3, we can actually program the robot to move to the zone after detecting it. So we're going to need another if else if else block and we'll drag it under here because as you can see oops sorry we're dragging it under the green block here because that's our for loop and once we're done with the for loop we'll we're done with actually detecting the ob objects and we can move on to the rest of our program all right so we're gonna have to go back under logic and grab an equals and then grab your zone variable from the variables folder and a math block. Alright, so now we can tell the robot if zone equals 1, I'll just add a comment in for now, move to zone 1. You can copy and paste. Zone equals 2. Then you can move to zone 2. And if the it's not equal to 1 or 2, it must be equal to 3. And we'll move to zone 3. Alright. So here is where you're actually going to be programming the robot to move to the zone that you want to park in. Uh, obviously, I can't give you sample code for that, as every robot is different. Um, but that can be very simple. For instance, uh, if you don't have encoders, you can even just use it with setting the robot to a setting the motors to a power, sleeping uh, for a second or two, and then setting the powers to zero, and the robot will move forward or or to the side or any way that you want. So, as one final recap, what we're doing in this program is we're setting the zone setting our newly created variable zone to a zone uh, repeating the camera blocks for a set number of times right now it's an s500 when an item is detected we use an if block to uh, transfer the label to a zone number and then we use those zone numbers at the bottom of the program to actually tell the robot which zone to move to I hope this helps and 
Uh, as always, feel free to reach out to my team's email or leave a comment with any questions that you have. And don't forget to save.